For Family by Nanook888 Chapter 19 The Cost of Freedom Part 2 Arm locked straight. The blaster followed Palpatine's spurious tumble. Leia's face was set as Luke had never seen it. The same staunch determination, but shadowed as though he was glimpsing a wraith-like streak in her every feature. The sight was so shocking that it threatened to dislodge his own hold on the light side. Calm and coaxing were the furthest from what he was feeling, but he pitched his voice as close to it as he could manage. Leia, look at me. Palpatine stumbled, clutching his side, knowing that the Emperor hadn't actually been shot. To Luke, the display was glaringly theatrical, but Leia's face shone with a dark exhilaration. It's over, Palpatine. The ultimate power in the galaxy? I don't think so. He's not wounded, Luke tried to reason. It's just an act. You didn't shoot him. Don't belittle me, Luke, Leia snapped in a voice he barely recognized. Look at him, pathetic old man. It started off as a quiet chuckle that quickly escalated into a full-blown cackle. The Emperor straightened his posture strong, all signs of his feigned debilitation gone as he gloated over the fruit of his labor. Although the Jedi had irritatingly appeared to have inherited traits from Amidala that altered his vulnerability, the princess certainly shared her father's predisposition. Since he'd fixed on her to become his new apprentice, all his careful machinations from Skywalker's peril to the taunting of hopelessness and death of loved ones had been aimed at driving her to extremes of intense emotion. The latest manipulation saw her ruthlessly triumphant one moment, only to plummet to despair of denied victory the next, driving her further to her place at his side. You're too easily fooled, my dear. He flicked his hand, and the blaster went flying out of her hands and clattered away, lost to a dark corner behind them. Goading on her outrage, he scorned derisively. As if you ever had a chance of harming me. Luke thought she had fallen over or was in pain as she bent double and grasped at her ankle, but when she straightened with a familiar lightsaber in her hand, the dots connected in a disturbing flash of insight as to how she had obtained it during their father's disappearance. With an unforgettable snap hiss that chilled him to the core, the red blade sprung to life. Luke almost didn't make it in time. So quickly did Leia lurch forwards. She swung double-handed at the grinning emperor, but she never reached him, jolting to a dead stop as loose lightsabers smote down over hers. The spark of clashing lightsabers was followed a moment later by the green flash of the super laser beam outside the viewport. Another capital ship lost, bearing hundreds of lives. Leia's voice was deep and echoing faintly with the shadow of the dark side no longer resembling her own. You Dare stop me! Luke knew that if she tried to kill Palpatine now, slipping to the dark side as she was, she would be utterly lost. He strenuously flooded himself with the light side, but his efforts to reach her were like wading through Dagobah's deepest swamps. A mantle of putrid darkness clung about her, slowly swallowing her into its eternal grasp. This won't stop the super laser. We will end Palpatine's rule, but not like this. Then how, exactly? You've had no effect on him. We came here to stop Palpatine, and that's what I'm doing. Listen to yourself, this isn't you. Stand aside, Luke. The Emperor observed eagerly. Good, good. Give in to your anger. Skywalker never shared your goals. Destroy him, or we will only hold you back. Blue Eyes anxiously sought the receding brown in a sea of glowing yellow. Leia, remember your friends. Luke was encouraged by a flicker of uncertainty. Remember Han, he pressed gently. Yes, remember the well, Palpatine scoffed. For if you don't finish the Jedi now, their lives are forfeit and you'll never see them again. Drowning in the intoxicating darkness, Leia failed to detect the lack of logic in what the Emperor was telling her. She wrenched the lightsaber free from Luke's block and turned to face him fully, her posture taunt in readiness to attack. Luke's voice was heavy with anguish he could no longer conceal. Leia! Look at us! It's not each other we should be fighting! It is unavoidable. The Emperor crooned as he witnessed the birth of his new apprentice. It is your destiny. You, like your father, are now mine. 
Light faded as shadows took hold. Leia tightened her grip, a chilling smirk curving her lips as she raised their father's lightsaber, jarring them all clean out of the heinous darkness of Palpatine's web. Clogging the throne room came a voice from the chasm of the reactor core. Calm and utterly assured, it was a rich timbre that Luke had never heard before this day. And yet... And yet, what emotions the sound evoked within him, an unshakable sense of safety and relief, his own strength resurrected, a spark of hope. You greatly overestimate yourself, Sidious. Lando glanced at the vast ceiling, mottled with pipes and cables stretching as far as the eye could see, and his immediate reaction was one of relief at having the first stage of their attack thwarted. Concern over Naboo came as a swift second. All fighters form up. Stay alert and keep the ties on your scopes. Wedge contacted him over a private channel as the TIE fighters burst into the cavern after them and promptly showered them with their arsenal. This was a diversion, Lando. Reading suggests it's up there. A TIE interceptor had the misfortune of spinning across his target hairs and he promptly destroyed it. Motos exactly, Lando replied before he linked to the Admiral. Hermon, this is Gold Leader. The power generator is not in this tunnel. What? Clearly some changes were made since the blueprints fighter obtained. Beside him, Niam Noom adjusted their shield power distributions as the dyes swarmed around them. Bad Leader and I both came to the conclusion that it's somewhere above us. There's a solid ceiling, but we could try blowing our way through. It'll depend on the structure whether it'll work. You may not have much time before a defensive shield is activated, Akbar warned. We understand, Wedge replied. Ready when you are, Gold Leader. Alliance and Imperial Starfighters continued to chase and evade each other amidst the dense spray of laser fire. Lando steered the Falcon through the mayhem as Nim scanned and analyzed the structure above them. There may be a weak spot. I have isolated it on the computer, Num said in his guttural tongue. All right, it goes nothing. Lando turned to the open frequency. All ships target my mark. The targeting computers honed in on a single spot on the ceiling and all rebel guns were ablaze. Anakin was certain that he had never astounded a whole room so much in his whole life. Three pairs of shell-shocked eyes stared at him as he leapt smoothly over the railing onto the pristine black floor, the throne room silent but for the quiet mechanical hum of the distant reactor core. His first priority was Leia. He wasted no time in connecting their minds, taking advantage of her immense shock to slip past her shields and pour forth the light side in all its energizing purity. The dark side dissipated and disappeared like vapor, its flintling hold having no chance in the face of Anakin's determined rescue of his daughter. Leia wasn't lost! She blinked, gasping, doubly struck by the shock of seeing a dead man walking and the harrowing awareness of having been hurtling the sharp descent towards the dark side on the verge of battling Luke. Fortunately, their strong bond had meant that Luke had known that Anakin was still alive, but it was a stunning shock to see his father unmasked and looking so healthy. It was a first for Anakin, too, to look upon his son without the detested red filtering of the visors, and his gaze traced fondly over Luke's face and the identical blue eyes. The sight of the fresh cauterized cut under the right eye couldn't help but cause a jolt of anger at Palpatine, who had no doubt bestowed it, but it was a reaction born of paternal protectiveness rather than the boiling rage of darkness. Nevertheless, he smoothed over the reaction. Such couldn't be his way any longer. He touched Luke's mind. His son leaned into the mental contact, but all through his journey was firmly turning in again away. Later, father. It wasn't a rebuttal. Luke had fixed his attention squarely back on Palpatine, all questions resolutely stored away for a more appropriate time. The super laser fired again in another flash of green. So close. The thought ate through the Sith Master like rabid fire. Another few seconds, that's all it would have taken for his new apprentice to seal her fight and complete her transition to the dark side. But Sidious couldn't decide whether that was more infuriating or how his former apprentice positively oozed with the light side or how he was not only inexcusably still alive, but breathing on top of it all. No mask, no hissing respirator, just standing there in his suit with those prosthetics that he'd improved also with that permission and breathing by himself. It was beyond treachery. It was beyond all forgiveness. The air smoldered. The dark side about to explode. I never realized. And again, observed with blatant irreverence, stalling Palpatine's momentum. You look and reek like a corpse. 
By the time Mara arrived on Imperial Center, years of the Emperor's strict conditioning had expelled those earlier doubts that had prompted her to leave the Death Star so suddenly, and she was almost entirely convinced that she had simply fallen for the Jedi's manipulations designed to remove her from the battle at Naboo. Almost. That was the crucial word that saw her storming down the eerie hallways of the Sioux Recon Center instead of seizing this ridiculous venture and returning immediately to her master's side to submit to whatever punishment he deemed fit for her leaving without notice or permission. The lingering smidgen of doubt chafed at the back of her mind as she glowered down the guard's wing up, whether or not to insist that she identified herself. These stormtroopers posted on the intermediary levels were familiar enough of her close connection to the Emperor, but usually only Lord Vader and the Emperor were exempt from security checks. In her riled up state, she was perfectly eager to identify herself with some carefully placed eggs and was rather disappointed when they backed down and let her pass. The Imperial Royal Guard, securing the lower levels, the secret bowels hitherto out of bounds to her, was an altogether different matter. And because of that, she'd known that this was where she needed to go to prove Skywalker wrong. Whatever the Emperor was doing down here wasn't what the Jedi had hinted at. It wasn't. She eased open the power circuit behind a security code panel. She didn't cut the power, which would have instantly triggered a security lockdown, but she connected an auxiliary power system linked to a useful slicing program she kept to hand. Within moments, there was a soft beep to confirm she'd successfully hijacked the security system, and only then did she pry open the grill to the refuse shaft. Drawing a mask over her face to filter the pungent and occasionally poisonous fumes, she wiggled through the narrow port to begin her search. Your failure knows no bounds. Palpatine hissed, spittle flying from his mouth. You're not even able to die. On the contrary, Sidious, the credit is all yours, Anakin replied smoothly. It's only due to your failure to keep me ensnared in the dark side, and your own personal inexperience in killing Jedi. Your memory must be dysfunctional if you've forgotten how your order was obliterated. Anakin's voice became as hard as his Durasteel armor. I remember all too well. The clones executed Order 66. I hunted down the survivors. The force sharpened to pinpoint focus around him, his bright presence forcing back the heinous darkness of Palpatine's. But no more. The Jedi have been reborn. The Sith ends here. You spoke the same dreary speech as your son, Lord Vader. Sidious said, the title slipping from his tongue out of habit before he could curb it. The name, corrected the born-again Jedi, is Anakin. Palpatine's face became even more unsightly, twisting in revulsion as if he had tasted something particularly foul. For a full few seconds, he seemed physically incapable of speaking. And from that stillness came an utterly bewildered voice from behind. Say what? Hanging on suspension cables from a vent in the ceiling above the bridge was a Wookiee and a man in imperial black with rather scruffy hair. Hun! Leia had barely breathed the whisper when the forgotten lightsaber was snapped out of her hands, whizzing into Anakin's just in time to absorb Palpatine's infuriated attack of force lightning. Despite the power flooding towards him, Anakin managed to advance and force Sidious away from his children. Luke grabbed Leia's hand and started running towards their friends as their father battled the Emperor. Han, get Leia out of here! Leia shook herself free. What? Don't be ridiculous! You all right, Leia? Han asked, swooping the rest of the way down to the bridge as Dewey howled at them. You have to go. I'm not going anywhere. What the hell's going on? You can't stay here. I'm going to help. Who is that guy? Too much at stake. We'll defeat him together. Is that Vader? Roar! They hastily flattened themselves to the ground as a bolt of lightning streaked over them and broke off as Anakin regained his footing and reset the Emperor with his lightsaber. Luke and Leia exchanged a glance. Seriously, Han insisted with all seriousness. There's a guy in Vader's suit tackling the old corpse. He looked to Chewie, but the Wookiee suspiciously ignored him. Now wasn't the time to explain things to Han. Part of his senses keeping track of the furious battle behind them, Luke studied Leia. It's too dangerous for you to stay here. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
The weight of her gaze told him that she did, but she still hesitated, glancing at the fight. The super laser still needs to be disengaged, Luke suggested instead. Maydeen's on that, Han said distractedly, still eyeing the blue-eyed, dark, blonde-haired man in Vader's suit. One of your might think he could use a hand? Leia hated the thought of leaving her brother and father, still shocked that he was alive, but she was wise enough to realize when she posed more danger to them and to herself by staying close to the Emperor. She drew herself up and nodded. It's done. He nodded back and turned to Chewie. The human and Wookiee regarded each other, understanding more in that one look than could be expressed in a hundred words. Stay with her? Luke asked quietly, intently. Chewie's soft reply was equally earnest. Of course. Han jumped as Leia slapped his shoulder. Come on, Han. Sure, Han replied automatically. He'd only have been following the conversation, having been preoccupied trying to figure out why the man parading around Invader's suit felt so familiar. But wherever Leia went, he'd go. I still didn't expect you here. Weren't you heading to Endor? Leia asked as the elevator dropped and left their stomachs floating. Long story. Han shrugged. We invited ourselves along when Vader left the Executor. She nodded, her eyes drifting to the door. So, as we've taken care of the super laser, we'll be back for them. Them? Han had the unshakable feeling that he was missing something crucial. Who was that guy in Vader's suit anyway? Chewie growled softly behind him. Leave it! Han ignored him. Leia... They felt an increased weight as the elevator decelerated. She affected a nonchalant shrug, much like his. Long story. Chewie handed her a sparrow blaster, and she threw them a grin as if to say, Bring it on. Ready, boys? The door slid open and revealed a sea of red. Without batting an eye, she had fired twice at the nearest royal guard, whose attention was still fixed on the rebels on the other side of the room before Han and Chewie could follow her out of the elevator. Even when they took cover and fired from behind the control deck, she barely seemed to duck under a swinging force bike before she was off again, a little more than a white blur as she dashed out of range of the sun pole and shot back at the guard. But unlike Luke, she had no shiny lightsaber to deflect the lethal shots aimed at her. Princess Leia came a call from the opposite side. Han breathed a sigh of relief as she finally settled for more than a few seconds behind a terminal. General? Leia asked. How are you holding up? You're asking us? Maiden laughed shortly over a sizzling of four spikes and blaster bolts. Glad to have you back with us, your highness. We're all good. Just enjoying this little posse going here. A crossbow bolt hit a royal guard square on the chest and he went thudding back into the wall, his brief groan muffled by his helmet. You're beginning to sound like Han! Leia shouted back with a smile. Think I've been working with him too long! There was a flurry of movement before her. A swoosh of crimson blocked her view and for an instant she was staring down the glowing tip of a force spike. A mass of brown hair tangled the red with a bellow that reverberated through their bones. More Imperial guards joined the fray and rebels in Imperial Special Ops. Black dove in moments later. Leia sought targets but could barely settle a shot in the mess of wrestling bodies and flying limbs. The Emperor's Royal Guard were all expertly trained fighters, but the rebel troops were creative in combat and also had the advantage of a Wookiee on their side. Whether by grabbing and throwing them or simply tripping them up, the rebels made full use of the imps being hindered by their long capes. It was scrappy and ungraceful, but in minutes without another shot being fired, there was a pile of unconscious bodies in red. Solo scanned the room. Clamp. Leia rushed to the first prone body of a rebel soldier and checked for his pulse. Nothing. She moved on to a second as the rest of the troops checked the other three. He's alive, Leia called out. Just how cold? The other three shook their heads. They had lost four, leaving ten standing and one unconscious. Maydeen came to Leia's side. How's come on to Skywalker? Han saw a flash of intense concern. And was that guilt? Before she managed to conceal her reaction. Luke and Vader are dealing with the Emperor. We've got incoming! X2 reported from the door controls, where he hastily overrode the access codes entered by Imperials outside. I don't know how long I can hold them! You do, Maydeen said, directing two of the squad to bring the unconscious soldier before he signaled the whole squad towards the rear control room. There's a super laser to shut down. This way! The ping and hiss of the elevator door opening had them diving for cover. But instead of the expected clamping of boots... They heard an electronic horror. Leia peered out cautiously from behind the communications console. R2! Evasive maneuvers! Admiral Namu shouted. 
The crew would have loved to have done precisely that, but there was no time. The super laser beam carved clean through the Mon Calamari defiance from the court porter out through the starboard bow before continuing its trajectory to pierce its intended target, the Quasar Fire class bulk cruiser Flurry, obliterating it to fragments. The shock waves radiated back to the already beleaguered Mon Calamari Star Cruiser. The blaring alarms and flashing warning lights were entirely redundant as 600 meters of the ship's tapered bow splintered away like an enormous lopsided slice of an ellipse with a violent rumble shuddering through the bridge. The surrounding Star Destroyers converged on the two diagonal halves of the Defiance like Utapan rock vultures. Focus all shields! It was an automatic, deeply ingrained response that saved the rear half from the worst of the ensuing onslaught. The forward section that had broken away wasn't so lucky. The compartmentalized shielding lacked the deep power reserves located towards the aft, and it quickly followed the flurry's fate. The Liberty, the Sanctuary, and the Grey Squadron quickly came to the Defiance's defense, what was left of it, and bombarded the Star Destroyers to draw fire away. Admiral Namo! came Akbar's shout over the comlink. Report! Namo ordered the bridge, not answering his fellow Mon Calamarian directly, but leaving the line open to update him at the same time. Shield stable at 70%! We've, um, lost 55% of the ship, Admiral! Lower level stabilized, cabin pressures maintained, one sector in from the breach, all levels! Still calculating remaining crew members! Two main thrusters and three sublight thrusters remain operational. Maneuverability at 12%! Firepower reduced to 40%, turbo lasers and ion cannons down to nearly 15 each! The diagnostics spoke for themselves. They wouldn't last much longer in this intense battlefield, and Namu's decision was made. He strode over to the communications console and addressed what remained of the Star Cruiser in his usual matter-of-fact tone. This is Admiral Namu. The Defiance will likely be destroyed within ten minutes. I request volunteers for skeleton crew to remain to enable evacuation and maintain basic operation. All others are ordered to leave. Admiral Akbar? The Liberty on the Sanctuary will board the evacuees, Admiral Nabu, came Akbar's immediate reply, having anticipated the question. Copy that. Nemo switched off the comm and turned to the crew on his bridge. To them, he revealed his true intent. I lied. I will not sit here and wait to be destroyed. The Defiance will self-destruct. He paused, letting the magnitude of those words sink in. You are all free to evacuate. The choice is entirely yours. Commander Devers, the tactical officer, barely missed a beat before he placed himself solidly at his elbow. I'm staying right here, Admiral, he said lightly, as if he hadn't just joined the Mon Calamarian on a suicide mission. And one by one, the other officers, technicians, and operators all nodded to him, solemn but resolute. Namu experienced a surge of bittersweet pride at their tremendous courage and loyalty. He took a deep, wet breath to brace himself. Now that they had each elected to remain, it wasn't for the men to bear the possible burden of deciding who should die. I commend your bravery, every one of you, but not all of you are needed. The ranking officer of each division should remain. The rest will evacuate. That, he said, raising his voice above the junior officer's protests, is an order. He turned to one of the lieutenants. Would you oversee the evacuation and confirm the remaining volunteers and evacuees? As the man saluted and marched away, Namu turned to Devers to explain their final course of action. Force lightning sparked, saber clashing against saber, moving too fast to be followed by the naked eye. Just a blur of red on red, red on green. Anakin and Luke moved in sync as they battled Sidious, the light against the dark. And it was only then with the forge resonating with increased potency as they flowed with its power that they saw the truth of the light side as it really was. Luke, perhaps wiser than his father had been at the same age, was decades ahead of Anakin in this matter as realization dawned on them both. All their lives there had been an element of them, whether great or small, whether openly acknowledged or lurking in the deepest recesses of their mind, that had considered the dark side as being more powerful. It was an easy mistake to make when Sidious stood alone and seemingly invincible. But alone was the key. It couldn't be denied that Sidious was exceptionally powerful, but the crucial point was that it would have been impossible for him to stand side by side with another being as Anakin and Luke now were. It wasn't that the Sith didn't share power. They could not. The dark side stood alone, poisonous and lethal, unaided. 
the light side could not only exist in harmony, but it thrived on it. As proven by the Jedi for millennia, as now so candidly demonstrated by the Chosen One and His Son, the light side only became more powerful and more alive when called upon in unity. And therein lay the hidden power of the light side of the Force. Thank you, you can just sashay around in your pretty red dresses. I'm elbowed up behind him, catching an Imperial Guard on the jaw and the gap under the helmet. Having created some space, he planted his foot on the caped chest and shoved the brute away before blasting him in the chest. R2 had easily unlocked the door to the super laser control room, only for them to find another dozen Royal Guards within. And then a squad of stormtroopers had also turned up from back the way they'd come. The control room was barely large enough for half of them to be brawling and the fighting spilled back out into the second chamber they had just cleared. Leia ducked off War Spike and grabbed it as it whipped overhead, continuing to pull it around so the Royal Guard was overbalanced. She tried to yank it free, but he was too well trained to lose his weapon, and instead she found herself being tossed aside in turn. She tumbled into X2, knocking over both of them and the stormy he was fighting, but she went with it and continued rolling, ending up behind the troublesome guard and shot him in the back. Two stormtroopers came charging her way, but with an almighty roar, she was swinging arms walloped to them both in the face. Their feet flipped up and they crashed to the floor, head first. His crossbow found his mark before they could find their feet. How'd you doing, R2? Han called over the den. R2 trailed a frustrated electronic whine. He had quickly plugged himself into the super laser programming, but someone had really done a number on it. Everything was completely scrambled and encrypted and scrambled again. Nothing he attempted managed to make any sense of it. He was applying every one of the thousands of slicing algorithms he had stored in his extensive data banks in every possible combination, but the computer remained obstinately and impossibly insane. There would be a logical part of it somewhere, however small the target rebel ships and trigger the super laser at the correct intervals to prevent overheating, but R2 wasn't able to locate it. His visual receptor sensed movement. He swiveled his domed head and registered the Imperial Guard about to jab him with his stun bull. But before it could connect, a red bolt shot the guard in the shoulder and the sizzling end of his weapon missed R2 by inches. The blast fire continued and forced the guard to withdraw. We've got your back, R2! Leia called as she chased after the red robes, intending to press her advantage while he was on his back foot. Leia had no idea how anyone in bright crimson robes could disappear, but that's exactly what the Royal Guard did, getting swallowed up in the fighting. Almost tripping over the prone body of a stormtrooper, she glanced up to find two others leveling their rifles at her. She fired quickly at one as she dodged behind a pair, grappling for advantage, an alliance soldier and a Royal Guard, and emerged on the other side of them to fire with deadly accuracy at the second. She had a split moment to decide between the cover of a control terminal and some space that seemed to have cleared to her right. She chose the latter and alarmingly found herself back in the elevator she had descended in front of the throne room only minutes ago. The clatter of boots had her turning to see that two royal guards were backing into the elevator. They had her back to her as they kept an eye out for any rebels or shots fired their way from the second chamber and they didn't seem to have seen her. She remained crouched and motionless, concealed behind the voluminous red caves with her head tight on her plaster. Oh, freak! One of them hit the controls and the door slid, shut abruptly, cutting off the shouting and crashing and blip of blasters outside. The sudden quiet was eerie. He turned to his companion. They have gained more ground than we anticipated, sir. The scum are like flies. The second, presumably the commander, grated in the same mechanical voice. His Majesty ought to have sent reinforcements by now. There may be trouble above. Stealth mode, he said, indicating the controls. Yes, sir, the junior one replied and tapped in some extra codes before he sent the elevator shooting up. They meant to ambush the fighting in the throne room. Without thinking, Leia crab stepped so she was behind the senior guard and drove up with her legs and shoved him forcefully into the other. They crashed into the side of the elevator and she fired as they were scrambling to regain their footing, but the commander rolled away alarmingly quickly and she only managed to hit the junior one. She cried out as the tip of a force pike grazed her arm and electricity jolted through her, driving her to her knees. The commander glared down at her, at least she imagined he was glaring under that all-concealing visor, and raised the lethal staff to finish her off while she was stunned. But thanks to the Emperor, she was practically an old hand at being electrified, and she wasn't as paralyzed as the guard thought. Without wasting energy trying to move the rest of her body, she whipped her arm around and shot him square in the chest before he even started to swing his arm down. 
She was certain of his surprise as she had managed to keep her grip on her blaster. He was a little impressed even, and then he crumbled lifeless on top of her just as the lights blinked out and he left her stranded in pitch dark. She squirmed out from under the dead weight as the elevator slowed to a stop. It was dark and silent, and she waited for a few seconds to see if something might happen. Just as she was reaching for her comm link, a vertical sliver of dim light appeared, bringing with it the unmistakable crackle of force lightning on the lightsaber. It was the only indication of the door silently sliding ajar. Stealth mode indeed. Wedging a finger into the narrow gap, she found that the door slid easily at her touch, and she widened the gap just enough to be able to peer out across the bridge. Luke was just rolling back up off the floor, and Vader... Or Anakin, her father, what was she supposed to call him now? Leapt across to intercept the lightning shooting in that direction, absorbing it with his lightsaber until Luke rejoined him. Having regrouped, they advanced together on Palpatine, who kept Anakin at bay with the torrent of lightning from one hand, while the lightsaber in his other hand connected with Luke's, bashing against the lunging strike and returning several forceful blows. Just as Luke had deflected those and found an opening to strike, Palpatine abruptly disengaged from Anakin and dodged past Luke away from the attack, putting Anakin on the far side. Leia had seen Luke fighting often enough to recognize the force push in Palpatine's outstretched hand, and although Luke swiped an arm across to deflect much of it, he still staggered back a step, and again steadied him as he stepped around, and together they dealt blow after blow on Palpatine, who still managed to parry and deliver his own counters. The power behind every strike resonated in the crackle and hiss of clashing lightsabers. Considering her options, Leia settled down to watch and wait. She didn't want to distract them just yet, but she'd be here to help should her brother and father need it. Lando was rather surprised at the shoddy workmanship. They must have rushed through the construction, he said as he carefully guided the Falcon through the hole they'd easily blasted through the ceiling. Palpatine must have had the work accelerated, Wedge replied as he followed. They found themselves in a second cavern that mirrored the one below, except for the reactor core in the distance. We've located the reactor core and main power generator, Admiral. Any word from the Death Star? X-Wings and TIE Fighters continued to squeeze through the jagged opening after them, chasing each other as the skirmish drifted towards their target. No, no, Akbar replied, grave but standing firm. We're losing at least one battleship and hundreds of people every two minutes. We cannot hold off any longer. Lock onto the targets and fire, General Calvisian. We have no choice but to destroy the Death Star. There was a panicked electronic blare as Archer was bashed away from the super laser control terminal and went whizzing away to smack into the wall. With a roar, Chewie tackled the guard who had attacked the droid with a stun pull and in typical Wookiee fashion, he tore the man's arm off. The exposed shoulder revealed the limb to be a prosthetic and the guard merely swung around with his meter-long weapon in his remaining arm. Artu spread, not pleased at the violent interruption. All two, Maisine called as he rushed over. You still functioning? R2 beeped as though he considered that a ridiculous thing to ask and wheeled back to the terminal to plug himself back in. I'll be getting closer, Maiden asked. R2 shook his domed head and returned the entirety of his considerable processing power back to the task. Maiden fired on two stormtroopers trying to sneak up on the droid as he pulled his gom link from his belt to update Admiral Akbar. Emergency evacuation is complete, Admiral. The lieutenant reported as he returned to the bridge. All levels have been vacated. I sealed the hangar after the last transport myself. Thank you, Lieutenant, Namu acknowledged. Commander Devis, trajectory and self-destruct sequence all set, Admiral. There was a heavy pause. Namu glanced around at the stoic faces of the men and women of the depleted crew. His heart felt bittersweet pride clear in his bulbous eyes. It has been an honor to serve with each of you. They all stood to face him, their fear overshadowed by fierce determination in their final purpose. Likewise, Devers replied, speaking for them all. It has been an incredible honor, Admiral. Namu nodded firmly. All hands on deck. He flicked his comm link as the officers returned to their stations for their final act of duty. Liberty and sanctuary, the defiance is about to live up to its name. Please don't follow us. He turned the comm link off against their alarmed questions and settled in his chair. All engines at maximum throttle, Nemu ordered the bridge, his eyes fixed on the Death Star. Activate self-destruct on impact. I'm in range, General, Wedge reported to Lando and Home One. The Falcon was fast approaching from the opposite direction, having taken a different route when the TIE Fighters had started pursuing them. I'll be there in seconds, Admiral Akbar. Should we fire? Lando checked for the last time, even as his every thought was pleading, Say no, say no, say no. 
R2-D2 is working on it, but the super laser programming is proving difficult to break, came Akbar's dreaded response. We're out of options, General. You must proceed. Lando closed his eyes for a brief instant. All right, Wedge. Go for the power regulator on the North Tower. I'm on the main reactor. I'm a wrong boy! The Defiance! Target locked, Wedge said, gritting his teeth. With his finger hovering over the trigger of the proton torpedo launcher, he paused in silent prayer. I'm sorry, Luke. Lando was in a similar state, hesitating for one last thought. Sorry, buddy. A brilliant explosion flashed amidst the battle in space as the splintered remnant of the Mon Calamari Star Cruiser Defiance crashed into the concave dish of the super laser and self-destructed. Abort! I repeat, abort! General Capricorn, do you copy? Hands snatched away from the trigger's heart thudding. Lando saw Wedge also peeling away from the North Tower as he sailed the Falcon past the main reactor core. Copy, Admiral. He confirmed with great relief. We've aborted. He laughed, slightly hysterical from the sudden vacuum intention. So R2 managed to hack it, huh? No, General. Akbar clarified in a strained voice that wiped the smile from his face. The Defiance destroyed the super laser dish. Admiral Namu and his senior crew sacrificed themselves. The viewport filled with a cross-sectioned layered view of a battleship that one should have only seen in design illustrations moments before a great thundering boom reverberated underfoot. They staggered as a massive explosion somewhere close by shook the throne room, bracing themselves until the quaking stilled. And again smiled slightly. That didn't sound good. No, it didn't. Luke agreed, a grin tugging the corner of his lips. Palpatine glowered at the identical pairs of blue eyes from across the polished black floor. He seemed beside himself, his nostrils flaring from the fury raging within before he began attacking them with force lightning every which way. In an altogether different situation, it might have been an impressive fireworks display. Powerful blue lines arced through the air, bolt after bolt, flying out and curving back in sharply to attack the pair from different angles every time. Luke and Anakin stood back to back in order to block every possible trajectory. Palpatine's outcry merged with a ringing crackling of lightning. Even combined, you failed to destroy me. The Jedi are weak. Anakin thrust out his lightsaber to absorb the blue bolt aimed over Luke's head. He doesn't seem to have noticed that he hasn't destroyed us yet, either. He murmured to his son conspiratorially. Luke ducked past under his father's arm and deflected a lightning bolt aimed at Anakin's exposed back. He doesn't really get the Jedi, does he? Anakin was driven backwards into Luke from a powerful bolt, but his son nudged back in support. Never has, never will. He's been spouting the same nonsense his whole life. Their camaraderie was driving Palpatine's rage further towards the insane. Heedless of overexerting himself, he blasted out another formidable array of force lightning that charged down towards them like a shower. It was impossible to block so many directions at once, even with their force shielding at their maximum. They swayed into each other as some of the lightning ripped into them. Blaster bolts came out of nowhere! Three in rapid succession! Palpatine was forced to abandon his new tactic, darting his lightsaber into hand as he spun to parry all three shots. When he saw the crouched figure in the doorway of the elevator, he grinned. Welcome back, my apprentice. He blocked behind his head without needing to look, darting aside to dodge the follow-up strike and took a swing at the younger Skywalker. The Elder was upon him in moments, and they were getting and leaping and hacking and parrying across the floor in their lethal dance. It was in the wake of the shock rippling through both the Alliance and Imperial fleets as they stared at the blackened vestiges of the super laser array that another Imperial fleet dropped out of hyperspace over Naboo, led by the gargantuan superstar destroyer executor the new fleet was easily double the already considerable number of the first with star destroyers of all classes positioned side by side in a massive ring encompassing the entire battle Grand Moff Kain, still sidelined on the camera, couldn't decide if he should be pleased at this impressive boost to their numbers or irate at bit swooping in to claim the victory at the end. Admiral Strange, however, noted how none of the new arrivals fired a single cannon or deployed any TIE fighters to engage the rebels. He was about to contact the Executor when the announcement came on an open-air frequency. 
This is Grand Admiral Piet, addressing both Imperial and Alliance fleets. Through his threat of destroying Naboo, Emperor Palpatine has proven himself an enemy of the Galactic Empire and is no longer fit to rule. As the Deputy Supreme Commander of the Imperial Forces and Lord Vader's proxy, I command all ships to cease fire effective immediately. Gain's face morphed into red, then purple in his outrage. How dare he! How dare he! Strange frowned, tuning out the Grand Moff's irate yelling as he thoughtfully glanced at the scan, identifying the Star Destroyers aligned like grey bunting around them. Death Squadron flanked the Executor in their entirety, and the other warships were registered under the most senior officers right across the galaxy. He didn't have enough facts to deduce whether matters truly stood as Piet indicated, but to have brought so many Star Destroyers to heal was indicative of the stance of many of the leading figures of Imperial Command. Pushing aside his dislike of the Rebels for the time being, he spoke over the open gun. This is Admiral Strike. Imperial Fleet, hold fire. Nobody believed that all ships would follow that order. He could think of certain hot-headed captains in the First Fleet who might react in much the same manner as the sputtering Grand Moff beside him. And sure enough, a dozen Star Destroyers soon began firing on the Executor in a futile and frankly brainless effort. He didn't have to wait long for Piet's next announcement. The Alliance Fleet has agreed to a ceasefire, but with my agreement, they will retaliate in self-defense against any further attack from Imperial ships. I repeat the order to all Imperial officers. Cease fire. We need not lose any more lives today. Any Imperial ship not abiding by the ceasefire is in violation of their orders and will be disabled using whatever force necessary. In the face of the fearsome array of Piet's fleet, one of the Star Destroyers targeting the Executor ceased fire. The other eleven, however, continued their hopeless bombardment of the Executor and also began attacking rebel battleships again. Death Squadron surged forwards, a unified front of some thirty Star Destroyers. Two more Star Destroyers quickly quieted down at this move. One of the Star Destroyers, still firing, found itself as the sole target of the full complement of Death Squadron and was riddled with ion cannon pulses. It was a dead ship in moments drifting with all power offline. The remaining offenders didn't need any more convincing to obey Piet's orders. The battlefield of interlocking alliance and imperial fleets fell silent, the lumbering warships eerily still, with starfighters floating quietly between them. In the expected quiet of the Bridge of Home 1 came Piet's voice. Please forgive my tardiness, Admiral Akbar. I had some discontented grand moths to deal with. Where do we stand? Anakin, fighting as one with Luke, knew that they had an even chance against Sidious. But now Leia had returned to the throne room as well, and when gambling with the lives of his and Padme's children, an even chance wasn't what he wanted. He wanted an irreversible guarantee, and for Luke and Leia, there were no lengths he wouldn't go to. He would have been content to suffer the fires of Mustafa a thousand times over if it would keep them safe. It was time to end this! Leia had been forced to dive around to dodge the lightning that Palpatine periodically threw her way. At one point, she had been forced to cross the bridge away from the elevator shaft, chased by the curving arc of lightning driving her towards Palpatine. Luke's furious blows put us up to that. Although their fighting now blocked the bridge, he tried to force Palpatine backwards or entice him forward so that Leia could return to the elevator and leave. But the Sith Master refused to budge from that section of the floor even when Anakin, of liked mind, contributed to the effort. It was when the crackling lightning sizzled through the air and slammed into Leia, driving her to the floor with a sharp cry that time slowed to a crawl for Anakin. With force imbued, crystal clear clarity and a sense of watching himself as though his consciousness no longer inhabited his physical body. He knew exactly what was about to occur in the next 60 seconds, the precise sequence of events that would lead to his transformation into the Force. And strangely, all his frustrations and anxiety over the battle subsided, replaced with unshakable calm. He cast himself over Leia, shielding her from the lightning with his own body. In his strangely detached state, he barely registered the pain as he gazed adoringly into her brown eyes, blinking at him in surprise. Somewhere in the back of his mind, he was aware of the lightning breaking off, the sounds of clashing lightsabers becoming increasingly distant as Luke jazed Balbadine up the steps towards the throne. Anakin softly brushed Leia's cheek with his gloved fingers. Take care of each other. He sent to both his children, and then more for Leia. Your brother was right about Solo. He was still smiling, faintly at her confused face, when there was the thud of someone hitting the floor behind him. 
Just as Anakin had intended, Sidious had taken advantage of Luke's momentary distraction and force pushed him aside. Perfect. Apprehension flooded Luke. It almost sounded like, Father! Too late. In a force-assisted leap that carried him clean over the steps, Anakin threw himself at the Emperor. Sidious reacted in a blink, striking straight at the born-again Jedi. Luke knew instantly what his father had done. It was the single most torturous moment of his life. Awash with denial and horror and grief, his heart broke. Leia couldn't take her eyes off the disembodied tip of the red lightsaber protruding out of the middle of her father's black cape. Her mind couldn't seem to register that it would have gone straight through him. Even Sidious appeared surprised for a moment, before a hideous grin split his face and he began cackling. You missed! You fool! You missed! Luke might never have moved from that spot, even if the Death Star had exploded around him, had he not seen the look that his father gave the Emperor in that moment. To the monster who had devastated the galaxy and torn their family asunder, almost impossibly... Anakin bestowed a smile of perfect contentment. Look again, Sidious, he gurgled in reply. Look again, Sidious, dead. And all blood promptly drained from his face. Anakin had failed to block the lightsaber from being buried in his chest, but blocking had never been his intention. He'd had an entirely different objective and had succeeded with legal accuracy. In between the unyielding grip of the prosthetic hands clamped onto Palpatine's forearm, the Emperor saw that his own lightsaber has pierced horizontally through the handle of Anakin's lightsaber. The pure plasma beam of his blade, placed directly between the dural focusing crystals of Anakin's lightsaber, creating an unbroken circuit, supercharging the finely tuned balance of the massive energy unleashed from the diatium power cell. No, release me, release me, Palpatine screamed. Leia had no comprehension of the looming inevitability. She was stumbling forwards with no further intention than to get to her father to do something. It was only the knowledge that his father had at least found peace that gave Luke the strength to do what he knew his father wanted of him, even if it was the very last thing he desired. With the agony of loss lacerating his heart amidst Palpatine's shrill screeching ringing in their ears, Luke seized Leia in his arms and ran for the bridge. She struggled frantically to free herself. Luke, no, we have to help him! The Edigan crystals increased in resonance. The air began to hum. Luke was too overwhelmed to reply, even as he connected his mind to his father's and flooded forth all his love. Even as he felt as though he would implode from the torment of his grief, he tightened his hold on his sister and forced his shaking legs to carry them away from their father, around behind the shelter of the elevator shaft. Palpatine was still screaming himself hoarse, driven to frenzy as he flailed in vain to free himself from Anakin's death grip. In direct contrast, in the twins' minds, their father's voice was infused with love, peace, and the contented knowledge of finally having said something right. My son, my daughter, the Force will be with you, always. The plasma energy went critical, and the explosion billowed through the throne room.